Spotlight. This is Akashvani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on Made in India 5th generation fighter jet, India's enhanced air defence capabilities. The participants are Air Marshal VK Bhatia, defence analyst, and Dr. Sudhir Mishra, former DG DRDO and CEO and MD Brahmos. Moderator is Vishal Dehia, journalist. Namaskar and welcome. India has cleared its ambitious advanced medium combat aircraft, that is MCA program, a fifth generation stealth fighter jet project that aims to elevate the Indian Air Force into the elite cult of next generation aerial combat nations like United States, China and Russia as well. This program was given a go ahead by the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Tuesday itself. For more on this, we joined by two distinguished experts in the studio today in our program Spotlight. Air Marshal VK Bhatia, and we have with us uh, Dr. Sudhir Mishra, also former DG of DRDO and former CEO and MD of Brahmos as well. Welcome, both of you, gentlemen. Let's begin with you, Air Marshal Bhatia. Let's start by first making our listeners understand when we say MCA or fifth generation aircraft, what's the difference? What's so special about the fifth generation aircraft that only three other countries have it so far? Basically, if you look at the history of the fighter aircraft, you start from first generation, second, third, fourth, and now we have come to fifth. And actually, as far as China is concerned, and US also to some extent, they're already moving on to the sixth generation. So what is fifth generation aircraft? Basically, it has two attributes. One is that it is, you know, where it can super cruise. That is one. Number two, that it is stealth. Stealth is the foremost capability of a fifth generation aircraft. What does that mean? That means that it does not easily come on the radar. It can't be picked up very easily. And number two, it can do its job without other people knowing that it was even there. That is the kind of capability it has got. And to make it stealth, it has certain other attributes as well. For example, it has to make sure that its airframe or the design is such that it does not paint on the radar so easily. That is why they also carry their weapons inside the fuselage bay not to show them and not to become radar visible, as we say. So okay. these are the two main things. Second thing, they can also super cruise at, you know, without the afterburner. And that means they can go supersonic without the use of afterburner. And that also is a great attribute of a fifth generation aircraft. Not to talk about their other situational awareness, for example. That is also very, very advanced. And for that, they have all kinds of radar systems and other systems to make sure that their situational awareness is excellent. So the fifth generation aircraft, in a sense, gives any air force an edge over its enemy in the aerial battlefield out there. Dr. Mishra is also with us. Dr. Sudhir Mishra, from a technology point of view, you know, we have already made our mark with the indigenous Tejas. But when we talk about MCA, our listeners would like to understand uh, where do we stand in terms of the technology needed for you know making these kind of stealth uh, aircraft and a uh, full scale model was in fact on display not long ago in the air show as well so the mka model it was one to one scale model and uh, it was successfully produced by one of our indian company so it means we have already finalized the airframe design the second thing is, if you see the history of MCA, we have already completed the preliminary and the design development of this aircraft. Now, the, after the approval of the government, now we will go for the completely latest state-of-the-art system design development. Then we would be also parallelly setting up the production units, as we discussed in the various areas. Mm-hmm. Now... Another thing is that we will have to finalize the avionics, avionics of uh, this aircraft. Then we have to finalize electronic uh, warfare suite and uh, weapon suite also. Mm -hmm. Uh, You see, because it's a fifth generation, so it certainly would have the capability for launch of the UAVs and the long range uh, air to air, air to ground, uh, then air to radar missile systems. And then this aircraft also would have a kind of, in addition to super cruise and stealth, this we should also have the capability to produce this aircraft in numbers. Okay. Numbers means we can't limit ourselves to 12 or 16 or 18 or 20 in a year. 
we should have capability to produce at least 50 or 75 aircraft every year okay. so for that we would be needing lot of latest manufacturing capability apart from this engine engine is the most important part of any flying object and the engine as you know that we have been talking to saffron for sourcing the french engine and to g414 it's a us based engine and uh, both have come to some kind of understanding but we have not frozen the documentation part so to further see how much technology transfer these both companies would offer to us and based on meeting our interest we would be choosing a partner and i think this should happen within few weeks or months so that we can start developing the manufacturing agencies in our country and start the production line because this engine development and the aircraft integration everything has to go parallelly okay i'm sure lot of companies in the aviation electronics testing missiles electronic warfare communication radar they would be working parallelly to ensure Indeed. that we meet the line of 3 years mr bhatia technology dr mishra was pointing out uh, features you were earlier referring to uh, now the question is that uh, for indian air force and if you look at it from iaf's perspective how crucial and how important is the fifth generation aircraft or mk and how soon would iaf want to have it well as far as iaf is concerned we like to have it uh, like yesterday because and is not in jest what i'm trying to say is that our two main adversaries as the entire country knows that is china and uh, pakistan now china is already operating hundreds of this fifth generation aircraft and not only that they have moved into development of the sixth generation aircraft as well to cap it all this they are also giving these aircraft fifth generation aircraft to pakistan and you can now imagine that we'll be surrounded by adversaries who will have fifth generation and sixth generation capability so it is imperative for india if they don't want to lag behind in the aviation sector that we have to move forward with full throttle to make sure that we catch up and not only in the fifth generation technology but also in the sixth generation technology which is becoming part of the chinese development program so basically fifth generation aircraft gives a strategic and operational upper hand to indian air force therein and you mentioned about pakistan and not so friendly neighborhood there as well but recently in operation sindur indian air force has proved its metal its prowess as well the way it can strike targets deep within the enemy territory and let's also listen into what prime minister has to say recently about operation sindur ऑपरेशन सिंदूर में दुनिया ने भारत के स्वदेशी हथियारों और मेक इन इंडिया की ताकत भी देखी है हमारे भारतीय हथियारों ने ब्रह्मोस मिसाइल ने दुश्मन के घर में घुसकर तबाही मचाई जहां टारगेट तय किया वहां धमाके किए ये ताकत हमें आत्मनिर्भर भारत के संकल्प से मिली है एक समय था जब भारत अपनी सैन्य जरूरतों के लिए अपनी रक्षा के लिए दूसरे देशों पर निर्भर था हमने उन हालातों को बदलने की शुरुआत की भारत अपनी रक्षा जरूरतों के लिए आत्मनिर्भर हो ये हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था के लिए तो जरूरी है ही ये देश के आत्मसम्मान के लिए भी उतना ही जरूरी है डॉक्टर मिश्रा coming back to the developmental part of uh, mk or the fifth generation aircraft uh, one very important element now when we look at the indian defense industry scenario is that it's not just the dpsus uh, and they're doing really well but also the private defense manufacturers the private sector they're also rising up on the scene very quickly and specifically in terms of avionics or aircraft parts and all that but when it comes to mk a very interesting part of this this decision by the government is that private sector players will get an equal opportunity to partner with dpsus or public players like hav yes government has taken a very right decision to involve private industry into the major manufacturing programs actually an hcl hands are full their order book is packed for another uh, maybe 10 years and it's very difficult to expand so the government has decided that let hcl also have 
few more private companies maybe as a joint uh, manufacturing or joint venture or some special purpose vehicle model which will meet the requirement of manufacturing the aircrafts in the shortest possible time and i'm sure that when it comes to manufacturing we have number of companies who can meet the requirement Emashir Bhatia, when we talk about this crucial element going forward, the partnership between the public sector undertakings and the private industry, that makes it a different ball game altogether because the private sector seemingly brings in more efficiency in terms of meeting the timelines and deadlines as well, and the public sector perhaps understands what is it that the actual end user specifically wants because they've been doing it for all these years how do you see this having a very positive impact or a long term impact not only on the mca program but for other such uh, weapons development as well this is something that we should have thought of much earlier as you know for a long time then this country defense sector was considered a strategic sector and it was never handed over to the private sector for their participation but it's only now that this awareness has come that we need to bring in the private sector as well i like to mention here that in our own going program on tejas itself there are certain components which are now being produced by the private sector so when you are talking about the only way we can move forward optimally and fast is that we bring in the private sector as much as we have the public sector and it has to be a very healthy joint endeavor from both sides Dr Mishra we were earlier talking about uh, the public private partnership as Air Marshal Bhatia is pointing out that this perhaps is the best way forward uh, when we are talking about indigenous development of weapons weapons platform and, and becoming the net exporter I completely agree with Air Marshal Bhatia this is the time our private companies have become very matured they have access to the funds large funds and uh, there is a large pool of trained manpower both engineers as well as technicians available in the country so now is the right time for private sector to get involved with psus and form a joint venture and take the aviation sector to completely different level and i would like to also mention here we already have example of promos aerospace it was set up as a private company and it was a joint venture of two governments but registered as a private company functioning as a private company that's how it could deliver so many things in such a short time of course the services support was there but the delivery has been really praiseworthy now we are going to emulate that model and i'm sure that we are going to be very very successful and requirement is not only from the government sector now india is poised to become the major export of arms and weapons in the world and if we don't have the manufacturing capability then despite having the most advanced aircraft design with us like mka mm-hmm. we would not be able to meet the requirement so let us scale up of our aircraft manufacturing capability to maybe 75 or maybe to 100 aircrafts a year and such capability exist we are fourth largest economy in the world and there is no dearth of funds mm-hmm. manpower and uh, technology okay. so now is the time for us to realize our destiny indeed uh, now is the time for us to take that uh, long leap uh, into the future prepare for the future as well not in terms of equipping our own armed forces but also exporting weapons and weapons platform indigenously manufactured uh, by indian companies public and private both thank you so much uh, dr sudhir mishra and air marshal vikram bhatia for sharing your valuable inputs and insights with us on india's fifth generation fighter aircraft program known as uh, mk and the listeners may stay tuned for more such interesting information and latest news on akashwani thank you thank you you were listening to a discussion on made in india fifth generation fighter jet india's enhanced air defense capabilities the participants were air marshal vk bhatia defense analyst and dr sudhir mishra former dg drdo and ceo and md brahmos moderator was vishal dahiya journalist This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. Spotlight. 